Uh, hi and hello. Um, my name is Marta, and I'm not a Wikipedian, and I don't work for Wikipedia, uh, but I work for school. And uh, I'm an educator, and for the last 10 years, I was working uh, in a non-governmental organization school with class, with my colleagues here. And what we are trying to do in school with class, we are trying to pump into the educational system everything we can to make the teachers be more modern, to work better, to feel better, and to construct a better school environment. And to do it, we are trying to mix and to open up to different fields. That's why I'm here today for two reasons. One of them is that I want to tell you how we are open to collaboration with art, science and business when we work in education and how we do it using different models, among them design thinking model or social ecolog ecological model of health. And I want to talk to you about mistakes and how mistakes are perceived in education and what we can do about them, or maybe we shouldn't do anything about them, but can, how to change the teacher's approach towards the mistake while they teach the children. So this is more or less what's going to happen. One thing I would like to tell you is that is going to be a very old school workshop. So I say hello to people online, if there are any. But we are going to work on paper, there is no presentation, and I would like you to be, for this hour and a half, in reflection. Um, everything I need, I have copied, so if you need to see the model, I have the model. If you need uh, to see what we are talking about, you know, to have also the visual uh, representation, then we have it. But we are trying not to use internet for an hour and a half, if possible. Okay? <laughs> Difficult. Um, yeah, so uh, that was the, um, the introductory part. Uh, if you need anything, if you need to drink, if you need to go to the toilet, just do it. Uh, so the very beginning of what we are going to do today, I will just give you some of them. You can touch them, you can hug them, you can see what they are. We're going to start with camels, dromaders, dromaderos as we call them in English, because an error, the dromaderos. So what you can see here uh, are the camels that represent mistakes, different mistakes that we make. And they were created by an artist, Uhatka. I can write it down for you, hopefully. <laughs> And she makes them out of old clothes and constructs them because she's an architect in a way that they are little pieces of art. And we use them to work with schools and we send them all around Poland so they can teach about mistake not being a horrific thing that you need to eliminate, but something you need to hug and accept as an element of your life, not only at school, but on every stage of your living, at work, in different situations, and not to feel that this is something you need to definitely um, eliminate what teachers in Polish schools normally do. Um, but I will tell you also about our collaboration with business and science, because those mistakes were an element of what we thought um, uh, about uh, collaborating with business. We did it with, uh, what, what was the name of the company now? I don't remember. But we can, in general, we decided that we need to um, introduce things from outside that work for big companies to schools that are little companies and they can really make a use out of them. But before we go to it, I would like us to ask you to reflect what do you think when you think about mistake and to write it down on a piece of post-it. Synonyms. I will give you pens. 
Um, when you think about mistake and error, what do you? What comes to your mind? What are the first things that come to your mind? They can be positive. They can be negative. Maybe you have a story now behind them. Keep it. Don't say it, but keep it. We will use it. Words, phrases. What's there? You can do one thing, two things, you can put each of them on a different piece of paper. Okay. A few seconds more. All right. So we have a poster there with a mistake. So I would like you to, one by one, uh, Stand up and tell your name and tell us where are you from, what are you doing? Okay, I will just ask the, ask the guys, would you prefer them to talk to the microphone when they present? No, that's fine? Fine, okay. Could you put your cards on the poster. Nice to meet you and thank you for coming. Right on time. <laughs> okay, so we shall have shame, progress and failure. Anyone connect to this one? Do you have something similar in your answers? Yes. Okay, so what do you have? What's your name? Okay, would you like to put your uh, cards on the poster? Do you have anything else? Uh, I wrote it's a human. And usually it's meant to be Usually. usually. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? Mm-hmm. Okay, would you like me to put them? Trial and improve. Mm-hmm. Good. Thank you. Who's next? Go on. Okay. What more do you have? Hi. Participants. Mm -hmm. Super. Okay. Trying. Yeah, I keep on trying. Yeah. Uh -huh. As soon as I'm trying, I'm learning. As soon as I'm That's trying, okay, I can keep I'm, it. As soon as I'm trying, I'm, I'm learning. And uh, it's uh, 
I, I've done wrong. No, I'm, I'm trying again. And then when I won't give up. It's like about yeah, persistence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and well, I worked in a Montessori school, and I, I could observe that the children, the more they practice, the more and more and more, the more it's coming, and then it's it's like that. It's here. It's in it. It's in them. And I mean, you need to, uh, yeah, do try, try, try. And the the mi mistake is making you trying again, trying again, and then you have it, and that's it. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a way to to see, to observe that you still need to try, to practice. Mm -hmm. And so that's an experience, important ex experience, I would say. Yeah. Very nice, thank you. Yeah. Would you like to put it on the board? Uh, so, uh, so I mean, experience, do better. Mm -hmm. And it's not wrong, I'm trying. Good, thank you very much. Who's next? Guys. Uh, so I'm Krzysztof and I'm from here, from Katowice. And I wrote an opportunity to learn and then a temporary setback. Okay. And that's... Mm -hmm. Thank you. You have my favorite camel. <laughs> yeah, he's sad, but he's beautiful. We're going to talk about him. OK, so what do you have? Uh, I, ha I have a uh, similar uh, something to fix in process. Mm -hmm. Something to fix in the process. Mm -hmm. OK. Okay. Everybody pretty much covered it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Uh, Wakana from Japan. Um, I have the press, <laughs> uh, retry, improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have some positive words about mistakes. We have uh, human. We could go to AI, we won't. But uh, that's a very good point. We would start. We have experience. When there is a fear about the failure, there is no curiosity. So teaching kids not to be afraid is something super important while we work with them at school. We have improved. There is no improvement if we don't make mistakes. We have progress. We have opportunity to learn. Improvement again. Not wrong trying. Do better. Something to fix. But we usually we have also shame, depress, and failure. But we also have, I'm thankful to the person correcting it. And this is something I'm going to keep to make it a point to, f to, uh, to go forward, because this is something about teachers. How to make children learn in a safe environment and make them be wrong, make mistakes, but still feel safe to develop. And this is something we're trying to tackle. And um, before we discovered design thinking and we decided that this is going to be a good framework to talk about mistakes, we did a lot of things with inquiry-based learning. And we observed that if you want to teach something and you have a teacher and a student, you need both of them to be ready to give and take responsibility. And this is very important. Because if the adult is not ready to give and the child is not ready to take it, then we have a conflict. If it's too early for the child and it takes too much, then maybe he, she won't go back and do it again because they would be afraid. And the adult needs to see the readiness of the child to be independent, to take the risk, to make mistakes by themselves. So we have always a situation of two or more people that need to be conscious and need to know that they are, and then the adult, of course, needs to need more and be ready to correct, but they both need to be ready to make mistakes. 
And then we encountered this design thinking process. Do you know design thinking? Who knows it? So when you think about design thinking, what is it? Explain us in two sentences. What's design thinking? It's a methodology to uh, address challenges mm -hmm. based on empathy mm -hmm. and the user needs and pretty much recommends iteration and making prototyping and getting better every step of the way. Okay, did you work this, did you use that method at work maybe? Any of you? Do you know where does it come from? Um, That's Stanford really. University. Okay. Yeah, at the very, very beginning. Stanford. Yeah. And do you know the story behind? No, no. I really. will make it very short. The story was that there was problem with the mm, with um, children, like you know, newborns dying in India, and they were trying to find a solution because there were shortages of uh, you know in hospitals. Then they wouldn't have electricity, so they like had many problems with keeping them warm and alive. And uh, there were uh, women traveling from far away to bring them to their children to the hospital if there was something wrong, like plenty of stuff. But the solution at the end was that they created something in a very multidisciplinary team that was very cheap. It was one dollar. They made like a cocoon that you didn't need to have in the hospital. You could take it home that would keep the child warm. And they somehow maybe not solve the problem, but help the situation a lot. But how did they do that? They didn't sit down with the European and American solutions that we all have and work them all over. But they went there with students, with parents, with doctors, with everyone. They created a super diverse team and they took also something that is called someone who is called in design thinking um, a non-gravity thinker. Do you know who is the non-gravity thinker in design thinking process? That's someone who doesn't know the subject at all. That's an external eye. That's a stranger. That's something that that's someone who looks at things with a fresh eye because he doesn't know. And that's a very, very good point of starting a design thinking process. Make a diverse team, but remember that you're inside. And when you're inside, maybe you just don't see things anymore. So that was the very beginning, and this is the very beginning of the design thinking process. And also at school, when you create a team, invite someone who works in the kitchen. Invite someone who works in the cloakroom because there is no one that can see the children coming to school better than the lady who opens the door. Because she knows when they are crying, she knows when they are hungry, she knows that they have a hole in the shoe, she knows if they have friends or not. So these diverse teams inviting people from different environments, they can be really valuable. And I'm talking about school environment, but of course we can make it a metaphor to different levels. So this is the point zero. And this point zero is already about our approach to being wrong. Because maybe someone will tell us that we don't see something and we are a schoolmaster, we are a manager, we are someone important and we have to admit that we have to listen to different perspectives. Uh, I was because my area of expertise really is mental health, well-being and res resilience. This is what I do, basically. And I was at the Mental Health Congress in Warsaw this year and there was a psychiatrist that was opening the Congress and he's working with a method of dialogue. And he said something very important, that we need to listen to each other because we develop and we learn about the mistakes and failures only if we hear the internal monologues of different people. Because the voices in our heads, they are very different. We may think that they are similar, but many times they are not. So the point zero of design thinking says, make the team. And the team is the starting point, okay? But then we have the stage number one, which is empathizing. What is normally a stage number one when you need to solve a problem? 
find a find a problem that's very good because you need to find a problem and that's a design thinking situation but if you think that you already already found the problem what is the first thing you do whose problem okay why is it a problem at all? You're too good, really. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the problem? Where is the problem? That's very good. This is what you do in design thinking. But if you would generalize, do you know people that all jump directly into solutions? They see a problem, they jump into giving a solution to the problem. Do you know the situation? Yeah. This is a problem in Polish schools, basically. This is something I can tell you that if there is a problem, we have plenty of people already knowing how to solve it. Which is not good because design thinking says, even if you have an idea to solve the problem, park it. Maybe it's good, but maybe it's not. <laughs> Write it down, but what you have to do during the <laughs> phase of design thinking, the first element, is something that for me is very difficult. You need to admit that you don't know. And you need to live with it for a time. For a Polish teacher, saying I don't know in front of the classroom is something super, super difficult. Because we still are in a system when admitting that you're an adult teaching children and you don't know, you need to know. You're a Wikipedia. You just you know, push the button and it's there. We are living in a completely different times, but the system is still somewhere else. So design thinking tells you, you have to admit, you have to live with it, that even if you already named the problem, if you dig in it, maybe the problem will be different. And the solution is something you don't know yet. So this is the first element. And design thinking for the school purposes, because if you look at this model for business, you may add a few elements, is to empathize. What is empathizing? I don't know where the microphone is. Uh, well, if you enlarge the problem, then maybe it becomes more clear. Is that what you mean by emphasizing? Yes, but with whom you should empathize to solve your problem best? With yourself and with yourself, I have my limits and maybe I should know that because that's already a lot, but also with your target group. Because you may think you know your students, but you, might, you think you know your, I know, whatever, target group, but maybe you don't. Maybe if you ask yourself a few questions like, what are they afraid of? Where do they live? What do they hear every day? What do they see every day? How do they dress? What did I listen to? You may have some new insight about who you're really working with and what do they need. I'm not saying they know what they need because people, many times they don't know what they need, but you may see through it. You as an educator, with your toolkit and with your knowledge, you may see through it. So before you have a solution, go back to your target and check whether you have a bias inside of your head maybe already. Maybe you see them through their recent actions, what they did, the projects you've seen them, the situation you see them in, and try to look at them again. Which is really sometimes a challenge, but it can be really, really opening. And there are tools to do that. I can share them with you if you want to. But the empathizing phase is very, very important. And you then try to identify what they really need. Be in their shoes. That's what ex exactly what you do. I can show you one tool because I have it. I don't know if you know Shrek. Do you know Shrek? Yeah. yeah. So you can take a gingerbread man, which is a very simple thing. You can make a gingerbread huge. You can put it in the middle and you can try to ask them questions and analyze together, try to put inside things. You can put your colleagues together and try to analyze a group you are targeting at. Like try to make it and try to give it time and make an effort and put yourself 
in their shoes. Yeah, so this is the first element, but we are still in mistakes. So when you already try to see them through, you can go and you can, of course, do a research, you can make a survey, you can try also to investigate, you can ask questions, and then you analyze what you already have. Because when you try to make, when you try to teach about, um, because you said you have to look at yourself first. You have to admit at this stage that you don't know. That's the first mistake thing. Then we would like to ask you to analyze what you have and what you don't have, which is also very difficult because sometimes when we try to do a project, we just jump into it. And then maybe we don't have resources. And maybe we do have resources that we didn't discover. We just need to through, go through it and see who do we have and what do we have, what do we know about the group, and then we can jump into solutions. So there is the problem, then the analysis, then the analysis, and then we redefine the problem maybe, and then we go into solutions. Yep. When you're looking at the resources, would you look at the obstacles at the same time? Because <laughs> things that limit you, for example, if you have special needs present in your group, how to... That's exactly you, what that you do. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. Because um, so something we tell our teachers sometimes, you need to do something doable. Because if you try to solve everything at the same time, then at the very beginning, you can see the failure coming. You can see the huge camel dromadero like pointing at you. Because when there is too much and you don't know what you have and what are your obstacles and you don't write them down, then you can try to avoid those mistakes that you don't need because you can see what you really can do. Maybe some things you can overcome, some things you can plan. But for me, for the mistakes, the important thing is I don't know. I open myself to different people, both inside of the team and the people I work for and I try to uh, find a solution for. I listen to them, parking my ego and my biases, trying to really listen, because I know that in different heads, they have different stories. Then I go through resources, and then I test. This is something that kills Polish students that need to get A's and A's plus. They don't show their work in progress. They don't test, because they are afraid of the feedback. If I show something that's unfinished, the unfinished is here, you can show him, this is the unfinished. His leg is wrong, this one, I think. Oh, this one, yeah, the unfinished, this one. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna talk about projects that we have in the drawers and we never finished, because this is also this. But children in Polish schools, I don't know about you, they show the result, and then when they receive feedback, they are absolutely killed. When you do something for three months and you polish it and you make it beautiful and then you go and you show and people say, ah, uh, mm, uh, not really. Then this is really, really, really difficult. So what we tell our teachers is you need to show and receive and take it or not take it, but listen to it and get used to it. Because then you go to work and you have your boss telling you that you did something wrong and that's it. And from here we can go to the mental health crisis, we can go to many places. But this is what school should do. Prepare you that people will tell you things about the things you do. And you need to do something about it and that's fine. And that enriches your work. It does not the attack at what you're doing. So what design thinking tells you, it tells you open up, open up and show what you do. This is something that for you it's maybe more obvious because you work on open, like together on things. And, but in school, this approach of opening is very difficult. So testing and prototyping uh, and showing and trying, uh, this is something that we really try to tell our teachers, but they are completely killed when, the te when they, we tell them. And then you go back to the beginning, <laughs> because maybe the solution that you came with would be different in two years' time, because the circumstances will change. And you will need to repeat, and you will need to be alert, 
and you will need to change. So this ability to be flexible and to adapt, this is something that our times in general are demanding us to do. This is something that the design thinking framework teaches you and that's we are why we are trying to put it inside of the school. Of course, we could do a million exercises, but we have 85 minutes, so we won't. But uh, before we go to practical stuff, I wanted to tell you and uh, show you another model, because this is something that is very inside. But the circumstances, this is what cap capitalism tells us, that everything depends on us. We know it's not true, because there are different things that influence us. And I would like to show you another model that you can take. And together with the design thinking model, I think it makes sense and difference. Do you want the models also? Yeah, OK. You can bring them to the back. You can, yeah. You can take those. We will go to practical stuff now, but fancy a model. Go. Yeah. You want you want to take those also? Okay. You can take these also because I think you don't have them. So going back before we start with the with the socio ecological model, and then we go to I will divide you in groups, and you will do a real group exercise, hopefully, with the camels. Uh, I would like you to go back to your mistakes that you were analyzing. That this is exactly about not getting depressed and ashamed, and not feeling failed, and not feeling guilty if you retry really because you are human and you experience and you improve and you learn and you do better with any mistake you do if you conclude and if you give the time of reflection. Reflection is something in today's society that is really excluded because it takes time and we don't have time. We need to hurry and we need to do things. And if you reflect on this, then you can really develop. And what I now gave you is not the inside circle, but it's the outside circle of what influences you. And um, this socio-ecological model of health was created to show like the onion, what are the elements that influence you when you try to do something with yourself within, within your community, because you have your community, you have then a larger group that you work and function it, then you have um, the laws and how your, for example, for example, your educational system shapes you, then you have some international regulations that are also important and all those things influence you and how you work every day and how school could be an element of that for me it's very important that school that is the really the um, caregiver element because children they spend many 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 hours with teachers at school and we have to remember that they spend this time with people who are not burnout <laughs> who are self-conscious and, and who really want to teach, and this is something they do and they choose, not that they are condemned to do it. That's why we try to keep this circle here as well educated and as well um, in well condition to help the children that don't have the social, uh, cultural background good enough at home to to function well and to benefit from it and to make it, you know, a nutritious thing to school be that element. And this is an element of trust. You come from different educational systems, so probably you have different experiences, and I hope we'll have chance now when we divide into groups to talk about it. But the fear and the lack of confidence that in Poland we have on every element, that we don't trust the institutions, we don't trust schools, we don't trust the ministries, we don't trust the government. This really starts from the very beginning, from the internal circle, and it goes up through all the capes. 
Um, so I gave you this so you can try also then to look through the elements. We don't have time for it, but you can try to look at the elements that are on every stage to see how it influences the mental health and the condition of children at school and what we can do on every element of the circle to strengthen it because the strongest and the less fearful children are, and here we go to the mistakes, the better they feel at school, the safer they feel, the more willing they are to make mistakes and to learn. So raising fearless children will then be a very good thing because they are going back to the society, creating again all the elements that we have in the socio-ecological mode. Okay. Do you have any reflections at this stage? Do you need a microphone? Good girls. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, well, uh, yeah, I'm a school teacher, but I was wondering in your model here, uh, where would you put the smartphones? Because all the kids at school have the smartphone, and where does that fit in your model? Uh, I have the microphone. Thank you. Uh, the smartphone as itself, it doesn't fit there because it depends a lot on the system. I don't know how you have it. Do you have it regulated from the, on the level of the school or you have it regulated on t centrally? Well, <laughs> the schools, yeah, the, the students are not allowed to have smartphones at school, but they all have them anyway. Some parents have parental controls on the smartphones, but the, some of the kids don't mind because they have a second or third smartphone, and and fifth. No, but I mean, where where was this? Where does this fit in the model? I understand that this whole theory has been developed and tested for years and years and years, but the smartphones have shown up like within the past four years, and it has changed things a lot. So how could we evolve the model that is shown here to include the smartphones? I think that this is a discussion that is wider than this workshop. Uh, for us, I can tell you from my experience what we have discovered. The best things that works for us at schools, and I can look at you, maybe you also can bring uh, examples, are to work with the children through the policy of use of the smartphone at school and then make them follow the rules that they set by themselves. This is, this is the best, like make them participate in setting the rules and then they are more willing to follow. This is the best thing that, that the, the most, yeah, working things that I've seen. Uh, you can, yeah, you can take the micro and maybe you, you want to tell something then I'm willing to. Well, yeah, it's, it's complicated because my students, a lot of them no longer want to answer or say anything in class because they're very afraid of being filmed while they answer and they don't want their mistakes to be filmed and shown to everybody else so yeah that's why I, I mean working with mistakes is interesting i think we could dedicate a whole other workshop to in general talk about di uh, uh, digital hygiene and how to put it into the system because we are trying actually to do it right now the polish education ministry is also trying to consider what to do with that there are a lot of ngos trying to push the general digital education into the school but it's very difficult so i think that's a huge challenge that would be a workshop itself but thank you for bringing it uh, yeah, cell phones and digital hygiene in general. I think it's not only problem of children, it's also problem of teachers who overuse the phone and their modeling situations, so yeah. Um, my suggestion would be to just call it environment because it's also part of culture and society since every culture and every society defines how okay it is to do it or not. In France they have a very strict policy on cell phones at school, so there, they actually managed to deal with it in, in a way that, yeah, that the Germans envy them for. <laughs> there are some schools I know that, as you said, phones are forbidden. There are some that try to integrate phones into the curriculum. So they try to limit the use of your phone. You can do this, you can't do that. We were in Iceland on a study visit and they had their own... Um, 
devices at school. So if you wanted to use a device, you had a device that they had at school already with a control inside already. But it's a huge subject. I know that the fear of the colleagues and that if you're, you have a FOMO because you, know what's, you don't know what's happening about you online when you're at school, that's a huge problem. And one of the basis of the, of the um, relationship crisis in the classroom. In Poland, it also is a problem. But um, yeah, I think it's super complicated. Um, okay, guys, so how about uh, group work? What do you think? Could I include the people sitting there also? Yeah, you are willing to do it? Okay, so I'll bring my paper stuff, more paper stuff. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, please, please, come on. I need to know how much people I'm gonna have. Będę potrzebowała pomocy. Będzie pięć grup. Mam więcej, ale nie wiem, ile będzie osób. Musimy się podzielić na pięć grup. No, musimy wylosować. Więc. Yeah. You're participating. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Who else? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let's make it sixteen. No tak, szesnaście kartek. Mam imperfekta. Tak. Czyli po. Na pięć, po trzy i po cztery. Dobra, cztery i jedno trzy. Mhm. I to jeszcze ten? Wszystkie są? A unfinished? Jest? Jest, ok. That was difficult, but I, but I managed. I need you to take one piece of paper out of here. Let's try. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I work with children also, so you know, lotteries, <laughs> story of my life. Go, go, girls. Please. One, one. One, one, go, go. Yeah. Go. Oh, one. Here. Okay, guys, now, now you have only two left. Uh, we need to find the camel now. So what camel do you have? Here we have the awesome. So you take the awesome and people who have the awesome, this is your group. The imperfect. You are the imperfect. This is the imperfect. And you have the unsuccessful, so you need... This is the unfinished. Who's the unfinished? Unfinished group. This is unfinished. This is the unnecessary. Who has the unnecessary? Unnecessary? Who's the unfinished when there's, there is unfinished? Unnecessary. This is your camel. Unsuccessful. Who is the unsuccessful? You have your unsuccessful camel here. <laughs> oh, didn't make it. <laughs> oh, no. Poor thing. It's like a dinosaur. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who is in the unnecessary group? We need one pe person to be... You have your unnecessary. Yeah, you have your unnecessary anyway, guys. Okay, so find yourself a nice place. You can sit on the ground, you can sit on the chair, you can lie down, you can... Whatever you wish, just do it. Um, whatever you wish to feel comfortable. And now. <laughs> what we are going to do now is we are going to dedicate these guys a little time, okay? So I will invite you first to see what you have, how it is done, and how does it reflect the name? So look at it and see what's in the shape, what's in the form, what's in the camel. That's in the mistake that you have received. Okay, this is the first part. I will give you the instruction here so you can share. <laughs> Go girls. This is so <laughs> <laughs> so 
poor. I hope you have you have the most beautiful guy. Okay. So you have 15, 15 minutes first to reflect and think what comes to your mind. What are your thoughts about this mistake? Do you have a story behind? Does it bring something to your mind? Do you have something that is unfinished in your drawer? Do you have a project that you started but you never ended up? Why? Do you have in your life a mistake They came up better than you previously thought? Without this mistake, it wouldn't be such a beautiful project. Do you have a story like that? Do you have something totally unsuccessful that you would like to share, but something that made you conclude and really learn? If you have something like that, try to reflect on it. The unfinished, the unnecessary, the imperfect. Something that wasn't perfect, but was good enough. Something that maybe made you learn something because you found in this imperfection something new for you. Try to think about it. Try to talk about the name and reflect and find something that you can present about the camel to hold the group. Okay? So, what's the mistake? What's behind it? What's good about it? What can we teach from it? And how it is reflected in the form. Is this clear for you or would you like me to explain something? We will do it in 10 minutes. We don't need 15. I think 15 is too much. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, but the second thing is that you need to present him to the group. So tell the group what the mistake is. Okay, and what's behind it and what did you what are the highlights of your conversation? But you will only have two minutes and I will be awfully awful and I will show you some bad guys coming at you if you are over two minutes, okay? <laughs> I have more of them. I have even Darth Vader, so it's not a joke. Okay? So okay, let's do it. No, first you have a normal conversation and then you and then you only have two minutes to present. To everyone. To everyone. Yeah, you can choose one person and you can talk all together as you wish. Just try to tell us like what's the unsuccessful, what the kind of mistake is it? What does it mean? Shall we remember our personal stories and share inside or You shall do whatever you want to sell your camel best to the group. If you think the story is worth it, you can to the whole group. Yeah, so first discuss it and then share it. Do you need me to answer anything? We are good? Okay. I know, and I, that's what I thought it's going to be. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you need, just tell me. He's a drama there, actually. Between 10, 12, or 20, 24. 
board when he sits at the fence on the Alone or with the second teacher? Alone. Yes. I don't like being two teachers because it's it's um, it's extremely difficult when there's two adults. Yeah, because, because they have to the, also. Okay. The, the students, they, then they play one adult against the other. They're very good at that. It's like, you know, when kids growing up, hmm? the parents are divorcing or separated, the children usually play them one against each other. <laughs> <laughs> When you're, when you're like this is very a school environment. There's an authority problem, and they, the, the students usually take it. Because, because so it's... We can, we can make it come out in a camel? Well, I don't, I don't see why it's unsuccessful. I like this guy. Hmm. I mean, this camel is a model. It's a special racing model because it runs a lot faster on two legs. You know, it's four legs. That's very interesting. Right. That's very true, but and if he can it's a lot more flexible. Yeah. No, but a lot more flexible. When we look at the unsuccessful things of... It can be job related. This is my favorite camel. Really? Yeah. It can be um, I, I don't really like two things can be private, private nature because it's That's so interesting, yeah. Okay. And something that is not being successful either. No, no, I'm just saying it's the way the, the, the students, I mean, you ask for two teachers for the class or, or, or one teacher. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, co no. the first question, like, what are your first thoughts and feelings? So maybe, like, uh, uh, if I look at this camel, the first, I see two legs, and then I try to remember, okay, so camels have usually four legs. So this is something wrong. Like, something <coughs> not as... This is so interesting. So okay. I, I find a mistake there. But then, uh, did you experience a camel-like situation in your life? We make them travel to schools. We send them all to school, and we make children reflect exactly on the same thing. Like when I make a mistake that is unnecessary, what do I do about that? Do I get depressed, or do I try to move forward, analyze? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes kids are very okay. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. That's it. Yeah. So how to make them? This guy has a lot more weight. Did you experience a camel-like situation? Standing in front of the class, twenty kids were like yeah, <laughs> 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 same Poland. <laughs> yes, I actually yeah. Yeah. my voice and I have to read. So that was um, that was a job related situation. But I, I bet that in relationships some people you can make your own mistakes for children and bring them to the classroom. It's really children very like something that is touchable, that they can really, you know, like take it. So if you want to steal the idea, that is open. Collaboration of the open. Steal it. No. Kamal is like Wikipedia, what's going on here? Because yeah. why is it unsuccessful? Because it's missing two legs. Yeah, it's missing so two legs. Yeah, they're missing. So <laughs> they're, they're like real small there. I mean, see, you're saying they're missing. I'm saying it's small. Well, so we focus on something that is not right. It, it's not like something missing. Something that, that, that's missing. why it's unsuccessful, this camel is. Uh, but he tried, so... Because we're comparing it to an ideal an ideal camel. Ale fajnie, ale lubię. And a camel has to have four legs. Under well. social pressure, it became bad. I mean, I know that things that you had before, and the social pressure, that yeah. also... If you don't fit it in, yeah. If you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, difficult. I have yeah. goosebumps, because in Ukraine, like so you said about social pressure, oh, you have the differences of families. Okay. So like, like big families, and usually, especially it's related to the gender gap. Oh. So like to uh, women. Mm -hmm. So if you are a woman who are like uh, more than 20, more than 25 years old, or more than 30, oh, like, should like you should be married. Guys, is four more minutes okay? Like, so when? Four, when? okay, yeah. So you, uh, you shouldn't be living alone, or you should like travel, or like, so when? Like, what are you supposing, how, how long, when, when are you doing yeah. that? Yeah. Do you have uh, like plans? When are you doing kids with your partner? Yeah. That's a so good this idea. This is uh, yeah. actually something that, because yeah. people compare you to... Four minutes left, okay? Four minutes, four minutes. If something is different, like a girl has a different orientation, or different plans, or child free, or traveling, adventures, it's something which is bisexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do we do a lot of international projects. We do stuff in English. Yeah, yeah. School with class foundation. We are called. Normal picture, and then we kind of try to see what's wrong. 
So what's his name? His name? Unsuccessful. It's a movie. Do you know how he looks and what his name is? Uh, so his, his name? Do we name him? Why is it a he and not a she? Huh? I know. <laughs> 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 two and a half minutes left. Two and a half minutes left for you and your camels. Będę potrzebowała, żeby ktoś pilnował czasu. Dwie minuty na grupę, żeby ktoś koło mnie stał i albo pokazywał z Woli, albo pilnował czasu. Możesz sobie to, to są wszyscy. One and a half minutes left. Get your presentation ready, as you will have only two minutes. We have to see what we're presenting. So, what's your name? Her. Her, look, there's three, three women in the group, one man, so it's a chief. So, what's her name? Who would like to present? Because Lucy the camel. Oh, oh Lucy okay. the camel. Is this is Lucy. Lucy. Okay. You're going to present? I can okay. do it. Do you so, want to do it? Yes, I can tell you that. For one thing, we have a job related, unsuccessful thing with my little story. And then we have a family or relationship mm -hmm. story, a little like expectation yeah. where you both say yes, you know, yeah, that. Social pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Social pressure. No, mm -hmm. you mean the, the obligation to conform mm -hmm. to yeah. a certain. Ideal, or, or what people call an ideal. Okay. But so I think it looks cute. It's like, it's a, like chicken, a, it's a chicken for the <laughs> desert. So you know? If they think about mistakes, what comes to their mind? Yeah. So you have positives and negatives, and see the cute ones in it. We can just uh, get away from the stereotypes and see the beauty. So yeah. this is this is Lucy. Okay, guys, we are going slowly. We have half a minute. It's like a bird, you know. Gdzie są krówki? Były krówki. Gdzie są krówki? No to daję je wezmę. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what do we have. I will have my beautiful assistant Aneta helping me with this one, as we have a lot of things to handle. So the situation now will be, we will ask the group to present, then if you are getting close to two minutes, you will get Cruella de Vil, you will get the scar from Lion King. That was the one I was really afraid of when I was little. I don't know about you, but like, yeah. The Joker. The Joker we have double because we have all also the Joker on the T-shirt. So he is here very present. This is something very European. Who knows the Smurfs? So this is Gargamel. He was, e he was trying to eat the little blue people. The Smurfs. And he had a cat. Okay. He is a really bad person. And Darth Vader, which is probably uh, a very international situation. So now we're going to have two minutes and um, we're going to do it like this. The group presents, then we will have a little chat if you would like to add something, compliment or something, or have a reflection. And then we will follow until we all the people present. Okay? So who would like to start? The microphone. Maybe we'll start here. Okay, can we? We were at the same time. Here's your microphone. Who's the presenter? Uh, I will be the first presenter. Okay, so the time is on. Okay, so the name of our camel is the imperfect. Uh, the tagline: I'm ready to be wrong. And where first the description of the camel itself. Uh, it has too many 
uh, the imperfection may come from the fact that it has too many of the uh, humps, right? Uh, so probably that's not the correct thing here, but then we thought maybe, maybe that's not an imperfection because when the camel has so many extra parts, it can carry more water and also maybe it can transport more. Uh, one of us suggested that maybe the whole family could sit on the different parts of the camel and move around. And also it's a bit more stylish this way. Maybe it's a little bit punk rock, you know, it's <laughs> maybe it's not a bug, it's a feature. So uh, that's uh, maybe the, it's not about embracing the imperfections. Maybe it's actually uh, the way, uh, maybe it's better that way. But we also have a story. This is Wikipedia Camel. Because in the beginning, when Jimmy Wales founded Wikipedia, he hadn't a plan what, he, what would become the, the encyclopedia we have today. And we think that the person who made this Camel didn't have the idea what to do. The person just started and, and produced and made this like Wikipedia and Wikipedia is imperfect. We can always improve it. It's, it's made by, by design, not perfect. Super. Woo. Anything else? And the Wikipedia is always expanding as the Camel also is. So, yeah. Maybe he reproduces like this, that you just, you know, like, kak, and you have a new camel. <laughs> Could be. Thank you so much. We have some sweets for you as a, uh, you know, you need to now withdraw your energy. You have the School with Class uh, logo on it. So, anyone with any additional comments here? In the classroom, to bring, bring, bring an imperfect camel is sometimes very important because it opens up to everybody being imperfect. And it's really as a factor that prevents, uh, you know, exclusion in the classroom and like opening up on the subject. You can bring an imperfect camel and it's easier to talk through a metaphor than sometimes to open up through a real story. So it is also an element of uh, classroom environment that you can you can um, use, yeah, if you're a teacher. And we have a few. <laughs> okay, any comments on this beautiful imperfect camel? And we can... Okay. Girls and boys, here's your microphone. Who's the speaker? Um, okay, and time is... Oh, you're going to be here. I just want to see the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, we have... The unsuccessful. We gave him the name Lucy. He's missing two legs. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, He's missing two legs. You can show him. It's the un. It's the unperfect. And um, the problem with this camel is that he's not balanced. He cannot really walk straight. He's gonna. He's gonna maybe tip over. And this is something that we all face in life, because we were talking about what would be unsuccessful to us. Uh, where I'm from, Germany, success is always business related. <laughs> so you're unsuccessful when you fail. This is me. I'm your failure. I studied to be a teacher. I'm fully trained. I never taught because I was just overwhelmed by being confronted with the needs of 20 different people. I couldn't deal. It was too much. I couldn't cope. I almost lost my voice. And now my job is to be a translator, a ghostwriter, and a lecturer who finds the mistakes of others and thus makes her money with that. But the other side of being unperfect is the relationship and family side. The other women from our group are from the Ukraine and from Japan, and they say they've been exposed to that social pressure. It's like, as a woman, when you reach a certain age, it's like, okay, what about your family situation? Oh, you don't have a husband, you don't have kids, why not? It's like, the social pressure about not fitting in is created by the stereotype of expectation to be like everyone else. As soon as you're not, or if you failed in your job, well, it's not perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments? Anyone? Here. It's, I can say it, yeah. It's very interesting when I think she said uh, it, it, 
it doesn't have two legs but when i saw it in my mind uh, it didn't have to have the other two legs uh, i felt like it was almost complete uh, because uh, i can see and maybe relating it, it it somehow looked like an ostrich you know or a chicken <laughs> or a chicken uh <laughs> But if you look at an ostrich and and the feathers and that you know I, I think it's called a plume it's it's you can feel it's too heavy for you for for the legs uh yeah that's what, so that was my comment when when she said oh it's missing two legs I was like oh <laughs> I I didn't think it needed two more legs yeah <laughs> yeah and from that like chickens is what is left of Tyrannosaurus rex and so it's a very powerful animal even though now we eat it but before it would have ate us and so respect to the chickens <laughs> when i was little i always was thinking whether they had two or four and until now i had to think like do the chickens they have two legs or four legs really so yeah um thank you so much um uh, the the the, the krówki Okay. Sugar is always a good idea. Who's next? Girls? Thank you. We, we didn't even use one of them because you're keeping up to time. That's so we have the unfinished. <laughs> See, he does he's missing a paw. And yeah, it makes us feel he, he wants to go on, but he, he cannot. He's to, he's always falling down. He wants to go on and on. No, he cannot. He's having something deep with him. That reminds us we have something deep, um, heavy, something heavy in it. He, it's it's make us think heavy. I cannot go on because something is missing, and he's got this power missing. He cannot go. He's sad. He's he's what? Do something to me, and I I, I cannot. What? I'm I'm not finished. I'm not happy. I'm not happy because I'm always this pause is uh, he I'm cannot something is heavy for me. We have maybe a yeah, and we compared it with uh, yeah with uh, the goals that we are setting for us. For example, for me it was the uh, some other language learning, and I set a goal, uh, but I didn't accomplish it uh, during that time that I wanted to. So now I feel in sometimes ashamed to myself, like that I didn't um, accomplish the thing that I promised to myself and. Also, we shared about the hobbies that we have, that sometimes we um, really want to do so, uh, but uh, something is not driving us to continue or we don't have en uh, enough motivation. And of course, we can live without it as the same as the camel can like live without the uh, first leg, uh, but uh, and the same as we can live without our hobbies on s or some other goals, but we will be feeling like... Um, unfinished with it yeah so that yeah and unhappy like mentally so long story short uh we can uh, relate it to our life if we want to do to finish something we need to have extra motivation and spirit so that we can finish our something our goals and our hobbies and so on thank you thank you <laughs> Any comments on the unfinished? Guys, we need some sugar. <laughs> After all the presentations, I will tell you a little bit about the school context, but we have two camels left. Yeah? Okay, the awesome. Oh. Yeah. I'll make a summary of. Uh, we had three points of view, and the, f the first one is like, there is a lot happening with this camel. It has a little bit of everything. You can't even tell sometimes it's a camel. It has like a horn and wings and a nice sweater. And when we were talking about uh, this, um, my personal view is that I don't see anything wrong with this camel. It depends on what. How do you find a mistake? 
because it's hard to to start from there. I arrived, I arrived late, but basically the idea is it's kind of over the top, overdone, and kind of messy as well. <laughs> like the sweater is like ragged and so on. Uh, and so we believe that the name is very appropriate for the for the camel, the awesome. You know, it's like. I came out better than I planned. <laughs> but then with that word, the planned word, it's like when you plan something, you're also hoping to reach a point, right? Like you want to arrive somewhere. And that point of arrival is an expectation. And so in, in my way of seeing the, the, the world I shared with, with the group, expectation is a prison. When you set up an expectation, then you're you can fail. So if you don't have expectations, then you cannot be disappointed. And so that's why I personally couldn't see this camel as a mistake. But then our friend, we were talking about in which situation we were over the top. Like we did more maybe than what we wanted. And the only experience we had was uh, the experience of him that he said that in a, in a presentation he had a a difficult task and he made like a, like a oh my time ran out <laughs> well he made a very beautiful sheet and so I'm not afraid of that one but <laughs> <laughs> a very beautiful sheet and then it was try another one <laughs> yeah well Darth Vader maybe and, and it was overdone and people focused more and couldn't work so being over the top uh, removes a bit of pragmatism sometimes and you're not focused and still you it's beautiful but maybe you couldn't do as much work uh, efficiently if it would have been toned down. And leave I, him as imperfect, for example. Yeah. Mm, thank you. I hope I, it was it's not a fair. Yeah. Okay. Do you need sweets? <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. All right. That always works with kids. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm? You can take two then. <laughs> okay. Okay, and the last one. This is my favorite. Uh, he's very sad, <laughs> but I think he's so beautiful. Okay, guys. Okay, so this is the unnecessary camel. <laughs> so actually, when I see this camel as a school teacher, imagine um, this camel comes to my class, and I can see that it invokes some frustration when I see this camel because, for example, I ask this camel, okay, um, for you to come to the class, just bring two hums or something like this. But then apparently, the, when this camel come to my class, there's another hum tree and then it's um, at its belly. So it's for some time when as a teacher, we expect perfection when we want um, from the students. For example, okay, I want all of you to bring this um, item to the class, but then sometime when uh, the day comes, the student bring a lot of stuff that doesn't really require it for the class because um, in the classroom we have limited amount of time, but then sometimes when they ask unnecessary questions and others, and it makes our plan doesn't really um, fit with what's the lesson plan that we have um, come up. But then, when I think about it, even though it's called an unnecessary, but try to think, why did the student um, come up with all of these questions? Why did they bring this type of items that we didn't really ask them to um, bring to the class? When I think of it, hmm, maybe that's their own view, their own point of view. Um, maybe it's not what we have expected, what it, in our mind because maybe due to our um, age gap, maybe they have a more wider view of the world. Maybe we as a teacher, we are maybe a little bit imperfect, but then we are here to teach them. So I think that's why when I see this uh, camel, um, I think it, that it's not really that bad to have unnecessary stuff in the class. Maybe it enlivens the class better. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So these are the five riders of Acroclips. Thank you so much. Um, so 
in the classroom, each of them has its own function, but as you have showed me today, you can use them also in different contexts. As Imperfect, for example, uh, trying to integrate, trying to show that we are diverse and that's fine and that's beautiful and that we are different. Um, and you can use the idea of the animals or you can create your own if you work with children in young, but sometimes with adults also. We are here working with camels to make a metaphor, to make a reflection on ourselves, our biases, our way of thinking. And uh, what we did today, we used the design thinking process and we used a model of uh, social ecological model of health to see a little bit what's the framework for it. Because we can talk about mistakes, but sometimes it's good to have something to hold on to, just to see how to operate, even if there is more outside. It gives you something you can have and you can hold on to. So this was my idea, to a little bit show you how you can travel with mistakes, taking something that is a very popular way of working, especially in business, and make it, making it your own. Because if we had more time, we could dive into how David Kahneman thought about slowed and fast thinking and how we could see that through design thinking process. How holding the, um, the biases that we have and the ideas that comes to our mind and letting ourselves immerse into something we don't know can create new things in our heads. And then we need that fast thinking, that's okay. But if we let this slow sometimes, that really can make a difference. So we did the uh, design thinking, we did the social ecological model, we talked a little bit about the school, then we did the camels. We saw through the different camels and we had uh, five of them and we could see how they can move you into reflection. The unfinished projects that we have in our drawers but are never finished, as you said, our hobbies, languages that we never learned, people we never became. And although we become more projects like this, we accumulate in our drawers, really. The awesome, that is, they didn't touch the camel. All of you, you had the camels on your, you know, on your knees and, and this one is like a saint. He's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but this was is you 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 gave a lot of beautiful insights into that but sometimes really you do something and you do something that you didn't plan maybe not wrong and you, you look at it and you think whoa that's amazing that's amazing i didn't think that that would come like like this is the representation of it then we have the imperfect the wikimedia wikimedia wikipedia camel uh, that is just like it is, like all of us. There is nothing that he's not the beautiful this, but he's very human, very normal. And he can serve as a metaphor for many things. We have the unnecessary, um, something that we think we, can el we, we should eliminate, yeah? Okay, so, and the unsuccessful, that we think that we failed, that there is something wrong, that like, like, th like this is the end of our lives and probably nothing will be better, never. This is something to, over he's something to overcome and to understand that he's also the part of our lives. And now we have five minutes left, so it's not a lot. And uh, my idea was to, for you to choose a card from cards that are here, a card that would uh, reflect something that you take from the workshop, one thing, and for goodbye round, just to say one or two words that you take with you. But we really have a little time, so you can take the card, but you don't have to. We will just make a very quick round of saying, what am I taking, okay? So if you need a v visual uh, representation, take it. If not, just 30 seconds, and we will just close uh, what we did here, okay? There were a lot of visuals, so I can understand that some people can feel overwhelmed also.
Do you have something on your mind and I can, for example, handle you something? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what happened. Uh... You, if, if there is something that is a metaphor for you of you're taking from the workshop and you want to take it, you can take it. If you have something you're taking from the workshop that's in your head, that's absolutely fine. Here you have the music and, uh, you know, different... Okay, so if you already have your card, just sit down so we can make it quick because we are being told that our time is running and we have to hurry up. And we will gonna make it popcorn method. You know the popcorn method? Who breaks first, talks first, okay? It's like you pop first, then if you pop first, you're the first one to speak, okay? Like the popcorn. Who's the first popcorn seed? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Do you want to be next popcorn? Yeah. Thank you. You want to? Yep. We can follow if you're ready. That will be faster maybe, yeah? It depends on the voice, yeah. So. Hello. So I picked this card because it reflects on myself where I always overthink of something and I always think of want to achieve everything but I can't do it if I always try to uh, do everything in one time. So I think uh, in this life we, need, we just have to enjoy the process and do one step at a time. Thank you. Thank you. I have this card with the girl and... Uh, uh, here it seems like she has different feelings, but he feels like harmony inside. And for me, it means that uh, it's fine uh, to feel differently and to respect each side of you. And um, yeah, you need to find a balance and to feel well. Thank you. I took the leaves coming down in the, in the autumn, in the winter, and coming up again in the spring. I mean, everything, every year I can start again. I've, I have not finished in the winter, but spring is coming back again, Beautiful. and I'll try again. And I'm gardening a lot, so I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it every year. Thank you. Beautiful metaphor. Yep. Uh, an image of a girl uh, at the window. Uh, my two words are active observer. Thank you. Okay, so I took a card with cats looking in different directions because I uh, like to hear the different points of view and different approaches to describing the camels and the stories here in the groups. Thank you. As a teacher, I must uh, stop in looking for students something uh, smaller, but maybe diamond. Yeah, you're a teacher. We will talk afterwards. <laughs> okay, I chose this card because this re really illustrates well what happened in my classroom. It's really messy, very unorganized. But then um, when I think of it, um, sometimes we don't really need to follow by the book. 
all of the time. Uh, sometimes imperfection makes something we learn more from the class. So that's what I think best on this card. Thank you. I took this one uh, majorly because we got an offline uh, session. And I, w I think that my words would be breathe and get inspired. OK. Are we finished? Anyone else? Just to close the workshop, these cards were created also in cooperation with the artists. So we open up the, uh, with the camels and we close with the poster and the drawer that created those. These are uh, mindfulness cards to practice mindfulness. And I wish you a mindful day. Thank you so much for participating. And if you want more sweets, they are here, guys, I didn't give you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Go, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, plenty of them. I will put them here while I'm cleaning. Did you have fun? Absolutely. Okay, I'm